If you watch the Bronco build series, welcome back. We've got some updates to do before this gets shipped out to the customers. And if you watch the series, you know that we were waiting on a few items. So let's take a look at what we were waiting for for this aircraft. All right, so we got some new names printed up. So the names are correct. The call sign just needs to go underneath the name. That's just a scale detail. So we're gonna get that done. Uh, we got some aluminum louvers done up here. These are done up by Joe at RC Custom 3D Printing. So I had him send these to me. Uh, he manufactures these guys. So there's a 3D printed template, which uh, matches up perfectly with the dimensions of the louver, of course, and then also the cutouts as well too. So we can just uh, get this positioned, mark out our cutout locations, and then that's gonna be perfectly geared for these louvers. Now, what are these things for? Well, we've got our speed controls mounted right here. During the, the build series, we did a vent fitting down at the bottom to allow air to escape. And of course, there's a little bit of a pocket available in the front nose gear. So there's gonna be a bit of air that comes through there, but we wanna maximize the amount of air going over those ESCs. So there's not gonna be a problem. So in this case, we've got uh, a former right here, a former right here. So we're gonna have these louvers pointing forward or the scoops pointing forward. So they actually suck air in and they're gonna be mounted sort of like that. And the point of course is to have air coming in those slots over top of the ESCs and then there's a path out down here. So that's gonna make a significant difference for airflow and that just makes it simpler rather than putting a, like a separate fan or something in there. And uh, obviously the hot air is going to have a path to exit the fuselage. Now, the other big thing is the new motors from Phoenix Models. Now, these motors are substantially or significantly different than the stock ones. So the stock ones kind of have a, a bunch of electronics added in there. There's like a weird thing screwed on the side, like a grounding thing. Um, I'm, my hope is that these motors work perfectly with our Chikoi LG C22. Um, we're not using the stock gear controller, we're using this one. So we're gonna test these guys out and make sure they work, but uh, apparently these are a great solution for this aircraft. So we've got six of these we ordered, so we're gonna be installing three of them, and the owner will have three extras for uh, to have on hand. So here's the details on this, so RS5, sorry, R5216, there's the dimensions for it, and when I ordered these from um, Phoenix Models, the shipping was, I mean, it wasn't overly expensive in the grand scheme of things, but these things are pretty affordable. So I just ordered six because why not have three extras? So those are the things we need to accomplish on this aircraft. We're also waiting for the ESC to come back from Jetty. There was a problem with one of the ESCs. It's been shipped off, service request has been put in. I don't know um, when we're gonna get that back. So. Uh, we're just moving forward with the other things that we can get done. And uh, this will basically wrap everything up other than just putting that ESC in. So we can either wait for the aircraft here uh, to put the ESC in or the owner can do it as well too. It's all laid out and very simple. So that's what we're doing guys on this detail wrap up video. It's not common that I do a video like this, like an after video, but there's so much little things and little uh, details to do on this one that I think people will benefit from. So we've taken the template here and lined it up where we want our louver to go and drew those out in pencil. So that should be repeatable on the other side. Our slots are gonna be basically in this area right here and where that translates to on this side. So you can see it with the ESC is essentially above this brace and below. All right, so first louver set is done. So this is on the right-hand side of the aircraft. You can see how open it is there. That turned out really nice. I'm happy with that. That is gonna make a world of difference for those uh, ESCs. There's the interior side. So everything's fairly straightforward with those templates. Just cut them out and it uh, worked great. So. That was fantastic. So that's what it looks like when it's marked out. We obviously haven't dremeled this guy out yet, but uh, we'll get working on this side as well. Now I was, initially I was just gonna leave these silver. I think I still made them leave, leave them silver. I think they look kind of cool. Uh, we may paint them. I don't know yet. Just uh, thinking about that, but uh, obviously they're not scale, but uh, they're kind of a unique looking piece. When the wing's on here, I mean, you really won't see it anyways, so, but. Uh, I don't know, I think I like them silver. 
All right, so made the decision to pull this guy off and got the other one prepped and ready to go and we're gonna paint them. So I've already uh, cleaned these guys off and we sprayed some etching primer on them. So uh, just one thin coat and that is currently uh, just drying, curing. So I'll show you what primer we used. So we use the Dupacolor self etching primer right there. And then what we'll end up painting that with is the spare paint that was given to us um, that matches, well, this is the paint that was used to finish the aircraft. So for this, uh, it's an acrylic paint, water-based, so we will spray that with our airbrush and we'll have to thin that out a little bit, but it'll take uh, a couple coats to get this, uh, these guys nice and uh, colored up. So once they're sprayed the same color as a fuselage, obviously they become pretty much invisible. All right, so next thing we're gonna uh, tackle here is getting rid of our call signs and moving those down. So the point of doing that now is when we airbrush these guys, if, by chance, we have a touch up to do here. That's the time that we can do it because we've already got the color mixed up and in our airbrush. So we're just gonna use a brand new X-Acto blade and we'll peel these guys off, uh, both of them. And if they come off nicely, which I'm suspecting they will, then we've got our new ones mounted underneath. Okay, so we've done a little bit of work here on the names, pulled the names off. There was a very clear line between the weathered and the raw paint area. So you could see the name right on there. So. Uh, what I did was a little bit of sanding and then I came in here with my airbrush and just did some, some two coats over top of the names and they've completely disappeared, which is very good. I was actually pretty worried about that. And then well, of course, while we had the, uh, the paint and everything thinned out and airbrush out, we painted our louvers. So those are all done and they turned out perfect. So now they'll be uh, essentially kind of invisible on the side of the fuselage other than the texture. Uh, many people ask what airbrush I use. I get that quite common. So here's the, I think it's pronounced Pash, uh, TG Talon, that's what I use. I don't do a ton of airbrushing, but this is the one that I, uh, I use most often. I also have a cheapy like Harbor Freight one if you're in the US, if you're in Canada, it's like Princess Auto type thing. So very inexpensive and I think they're like $50 or something and that's, uh, I don't know, if I have something that doesn't really matter, then I'll, I'll use that, but uh, this is the one that I use most often. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our louvers reinstalled, so those will, uh, those will be completed, which is great, and then we'll take our names and get them installed, centered underneath the actual name. And here's what it looks like with our call signs reinstalled. They look good. We've also put some matte clear coat over top of them. Don't know if that'll show up, but anyways, the vinyl was a little bit shiny, matte clear coat over top, seals it up and makes it look good. And then our louvers are installed on both sides. Those are gonna work out great. So next thing we're gonna do is we are going to move on to our retract motors. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this end off because we're not using this end anyways. We're gonna uh, install a, uh, a normal servo connector. So because we need a three pin and we need those leads to be split out because I wanna get these installed in our LGC22 just to check and make sure that they actually work. All right, so we've got our motor installed here or at least just sitting there and we've got the lead run to our LGC22. Now I actually could have left the, uh, the small end on because you've got negative and then two positive pins, but anyways. Um, so we've got that done and we will cycle our gear, so gear down. And it looks like everything is working fine. I've already uh, cycled these three times, held a rag on there to add a bunch of resistance, and they're gonna run uh, based on the amount of time we've got programmed in the LGC22. So right now, there's no resistance on these things, so when I go gear up, they're just gonna run for the 10 or 12 seconds or whatever it is that we've got programmed in there and then shut off. Um, if this is installed in the gear and there's a whole bunch of resistance, then that's what will make them stop. But they work perfect without all the other stuff that's installed on the stock ones. So on the stock ones, you've got another lead coming to the side of the motor. You've got a bunch of electronics on the, uh, the lead there as well too. So it's a bit of a, a different setup here, but that is what we're going to be changing out. So these motors should be uh, almost a perfect drop in. 
It looks like it's a little bit longer, but I think the bevel right here is going to miss our cross brace, but we'll have to see how that all works out. And uh, as far as our length goes, I think that should work perfect. But I think this is gonna be a lot easier if we get these gear out of the aircraft. So that's what we're gonna do next. We may need to, to trim this, uh, this uh, rod off a little bit because this rod's a little bit shorter. So anyways, we're gonna get these gear out. Probably gonna start off with our nacelles instead, just because uh, the nose is maybe a little bit trickier. So we're gonna pull the one of the nacelles out and we'll start off with taking those landing gear out and uh, checking them out. Now we can also do the same thing once we get the motors installed. Before we do our connector up, we can simply plug it into here and confirm with a bunch of cycles that everything works 100%. Now we also do have some spare LGC-22, so we could just use that, but it's so easy and accessible in this plane that we'll just do it in the plane. All right, so changing the motors here is fairly straightforward, basically, We've got to, uh, I mean, we pulled the motor out. Essentially what happens is you take the pin holding the back of the motor off, you just unthread the motor. Now here's the dimensional differences between these two. So if we line up these holes, you can see here the new motor is a little bit longer. So we're going to install these guys and see if we need to make any changes to them. So. Um, Pretty simple. We'll just spin that in a few turns and see if we can get this retracted. Like that. So obviously big difference. So we need to thread this motor in a bunch more. So that would be the first thing that might change on it is the amount um, of rod sticking through here. As long as there's no interference, we should be fine and I think it'll be fine. Okay, so we got the motor threaded in a bunch there, just putting the pin back through. Now I'm not gonna bother putting the clip on the pin because we just wanna cycle this and check for interference. So it's just an E-clip that holds it on that side. So now what we can do is we can hook it up to our manual gear controller don't necessarily need to install it in the aircraft. Now I do have the new electron manual controller, but I've, I don't have all my cables done up yet. So I'm just using this old one for this purpose. So let's uh, see what happens here. So we'll just go to this stop first. That's good. So I'm just checking to see if there's any interference. It looks like we've got decent space there. And it looks like these should be a drop in. Let's see. Nice. All right, zero interference. That is perfect. So our motor clears the, uh, the trunnion here. And when we go all the way uh, up on the mains, uh, this rod, is zero interference as well. So I think guys, this is a perfect setup. So, and that rod doesn't protrude through the landing gear at all. So zero issues here as well. Perfect, that's great. Very happy with that. So now we'll put our E-clip back on here and that is wonderful. All right guys, next thing, now that we are happy with our gear motors is we're going to work on our uh, main axle here. So thank you. I can't, I don't remember who you were, but this is one suggestion that came from the videos is going with a different axle setup. So the stock axle setup uh, has an E-clip on there. Any sort of sideways force definitely would cause that E-clip to come off. It's not very strong. So we have got a set of uh, pins here. These obviously these pins are very long. You can see the excess coming through, but they're a six millimeter pin. Ordered these from DreamWorks. There is the part number for them. And the benefit to them is they've got this massive head on them, which is going to be perfect to solve the problem with the Eclipse. So this is gonna be a great solution and they're an exact fit. So all I've done here is put the pin through with the standard bushings and everything. 
uh, put the set screw in the bottom, tighten that up. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna put a mark on the axle. So now if we take this off, and pull this axle out, we should have a mark on the axle where we need to put a flat spot. There's the mark. Probably can't really see it in the camera, but it's facing you guys and it's right there. So that's how we mark these pins. So we're gonna get that flat spotted and then we'll get this pin cut off. All right, so we've got our gear hooked up to our controller here just to uh, cycle it and see. Uh, we've got our axle all done as well. You can see we chopped it off there. There's a flat spot on the axle and much nicer head to hold the wheel on. Uh, it's nice and solid now as well. So what I'm gonna do is turn the aircraft on. We'll cycle this gear and confirm that it works. Okay, so we've got our gear installed. We'll go gear down. This is the gear down position and we'll go gear up. Nice. Promising. So that's about as worst case scenario as you can get. It's having to lift the entire gear out and then we'll flip it around and do the same thing in reverse. So now the motor has to lift the gear. So we've lifted the gear in both directions, which is again, as bad as it gets. Cause in the airplane, when you're going gear down, it uh, helps out because the gear is uh, using its weight to pull it down. So we'll cycle it a couple more times, but uh, looking promising for sure. These new motors are, uh, are definitely a good thing. So our left in this cell is all put back together, all good to go. Um, now we just have the gear lead coming through the hole in the, uh, the cover and that comes to our connector, which we installed previously. So um, that made this fairly simple. And we just cut the old motor off, of course. So this is our connector for our landing gear. And that's basically it. So that's done, put back together, good to go. We're gonna get the other nacelle on the table and do all the exact same stuff. I don't suspect anything different, but if there is anything different, We'll show you. So the front gear motor is changeable with this inside the aircraft, but the only downside is because this gear is a reverse of the mains, there is some interference here. So this cross brace piece uh, that has a screw installed on each side is in, it does interfere with the motor. So we have a couple options here. Obviously, you know which one I did, but. You could put a hole further back, but the downside is there isn't much material left there. So what I opted to do because this, uh, the gear is solid, even without this in, we've got one through, one through there. So we've got two throughs. Um, I opted to sand this guy down. So you can see how much I've removed there, a fair bit, but it'll still thread in nicely. And this allows clearance for that motor. I think that was uh, the best solution uh, of the options. All right, guys, so it turns out that the front motor here is uh, not an obvious fit. So there's a couple things. Uh, obviously, we did the, uh, the sanding here, which was fine, but you can see in the up position, so this gear is retracted as far as it's gonna go because the trunnion is hitting the motor right there, but this gear needs to still go up more because this wheel's sitting down below the door level right now. So we do need the, uh, the actuator that's, that moves the trunnion to go all the way in its little home. The only way to do that is to take this motor and get it moved further away from the landing gear. So I'm gonna try and probably and drill a hole right here. I'm hoping that's gonna be enough. If it's not, we need to make some sort of extension here to get that motor further away. All right, so after a couple hours of fighting and battling and repositioning and fighting some more, finally figured this out. So I had to make two G10 extensions. We had to get it past the, uh, the frame of the retract. Not by much, you can see there, I did cut a little bit off, but uh, that was ultimately the solution. So this is just C8 in place right now, which actually works out great. I've already run the retract a whole bunch. Uh, it's fine, but obviously we wanna go a step above. So I'm gonna get some uh, aero epoxy and we're gonna coat this with aero epoxy. 
and uh, get that all strengthened up and taken care of. All right, front gears back in, everything's working awesome. I've cycled that about 15 times and it works beautifully. So no issues there, happy with everything. We've got everything plugged back in, our connectors and everything run. So one of the final things to do is go through and shoe goop all of our connectors. So that's something we do on planes, haven't done anything on this one yet. So we'll go through and basically uh, put some shoe goop on all of our uh, items that are gonna stay put. So there are some things like the EXT ports on our receivers. So this is the on off switch, the remote on off switch. Uh, this guy here, uh, the EXT ports open, but we'll put some shoe goop on our control one as an example. Primary receivers on this side. So when the owner gets this aircraft, he'll need to unplug the EXT port to bind the primary receiver. Uh, we've got to put our second speed control back in here and that plugs into the E2 port and then our primary or our left speed control that one there plugs into E1 so um, we'll leave those but uh, things like the central box we'll just go through and put just a little bit of shoe goop on there. Now goop it comes in a bunch of different varieties there's uh, shoe goop there's marine goop there's plumber's goop they're all the same product there's also E6000. E6000 is a little bit thinner and uh, the, the shoe goop itself is a little bit thicker. But the nice thing about this stuff is when it's on, if you wanna get it off, uh, you can peel it off, but it's a very good grip. So all I do is open it up here, just grab a little bit like this guy on trusty bent screwdriver, of course. And we just come in here and put a little bit on the joint between the servo plugs and a solid surface. So on the central box here, basically the entire face is a solid surface. Now when you put this on like this, if you get it on the servo plugs, what's gonna happen is before it actually kicks off uh, the, or the solvents kick off, it will flow a little bit. The E6000 flows better. So anyways, now all those servo plugs are nice and stuck and they're not gonna vibrate loose. That is one of those little details that we do on every single plane. Uh, it's something that I think is absolutely critical and it really is helpful with keeping those servo plugs from ever backing out unless you want them to. Uh, if you want to pull one of those out once that's all cured, you can grab it with your fingers, pull it out and remove the shoe goop. So it's really not a permanent thing, but it is very strong and sticky. And I just want to give a quick shout out to you channel members. Thank you so much for being channel members. If you're watching this and you're wondering, what the heck is a channel member? Well, let me tell you, channel members, it's a paid thing, but channel members get early access to our videos. So generally we've got about two, sometimes one weeks. Uh, so generally two to four videos all already uploaded to YouTube and channel members get to see those as soon as we upload them to YouTube and everybody else has to wait until the release date, which is usually one to two weeks later. So thank you channel members. All right guys, and that officially wraps up the OV-10 Bronco from Hangar 9 and Horizon Hobby. Uh, the only thing left to do on this aircraft, other than fly it, is put the new ESC in there. Uh, still waiting on that from Aeropanda and Jetty. Don't know where that's at, but uh, that's one of the final things to do. And then she's ready to go. So that's everything. We're gonna be packing this thing up, shipping it off to the owner, and uh, looking forward to getting some video clips to share with you guys on this amazing flying machine. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. And we hope you enjoyed the video, so like and subscribe. See you in the next one.